Hello, and welcome to this video on digital gardening. I'm Mickey. I'm an actor and filmmaker and YouTuber, and I do a lot of things. I do videos like this on my channel. This video is in collaboration with Sublime. We're gonna be going into what a digital garden is, why it matters, how to create one, I'm going to go into specifically how to use their platform to create your digital garden, how I do mine, etc. I just want to highlight that nothing in terms of the concepting around digital gardening is my own. This is something that people talk about all the time online and there's a bunch of amazing videos about. I will be linking a Sublime collection and I'll add some of the great YouTube videos there are on digital gardening because people have been doing this for a long time. Starting off very general, what is a digital garden? Digital garden is one word for a concept. It's quite amorphous and we don't really know what to call I think right now in our internet age. There's many words for it. It's also second brain, idea library, uh, knowledge library. At its core it's really just an online space to organize and contextualize ideas. When I say ideas I mean it so broadly. So this includes images, notes, essays, films. The important thing though is that a digital garden, well its purpose is to save things, but I think the thing that makes digital gardens really different is that it is a place to create connections that then encourage action taking. Your digital garden will allow you to connect different ideas together, might turn into a painting, an essay, a film, a script. You never know. Don't necessarily know what that's going to be when you're gardening. A really important thing to note here is that these spaces are non-chronological and they are ever growing. Your digital garden will never be done, it will never be published. This space is a very personal one, but there shouldn't be any element of performativity within it. And I think in that same vein, it's important to point out what a digital garden is not. It is not a blog or an essay or a substack. Your grocery list, your to-do list, those are not digital gardens. This is a pretty basic definition. You probably already conceptually understand these things. If you've been on the internet for any specific period of time, you've probably at some point tried to save things that you liked. Okay, so that basically covers what is a digital garden. Next, I really want to get into why this matters, why you should do this if you're interested in it. First and most obvious thing is that it helps you pay attention to what you're paying attention to. You become a way more active consumer in what you are read, watching, listening to, whatever it is, because you're listening for things that are giving you that gut instinct, that feeling of interest and curiosity. Let me pull it up. I made a sublime collection, which I'll go into later, for this video. And in it, I've pulled this quote that Sublime's founder has pulled in other workshops. This is a Henrik Carlson. He has this piece called How Mr. Beast Learns. What we are trying to do influences what becomes salient to us. If you are making videos, you will notice patterns in the videos you watch. If you're not, you can watch a thousand videos and have them pass through your head cleanly without leaving a mark. Your memory will have little use for that information and so discards it. You can't just feed your brain information if you want to learn effectively. You also need a serious project. This, this is the essay it's from, but I'm pretty sure that the quote is actually specifically from Mr. Beast, so just wanted to make that clear. The thing that this really taps into as well is because there's so much coming at us and we're in such an overwhelming influx of content, it does really help you identify that relationship with your gut instinct. The second one, which is quite obvious, is that a digital garden is basically just insurance for your mind. The idea of saving anything, we've been doing this since the beginning of time. It's like, I don't want to forget this thing. I'm writing it on a post-it note. We're having so much content thrown at us to be taking that and putting it away somewhere else so that we can open up new space. I also think that that insurance for your mind and the lack of fear of forgetting makes you feel less attached to the social media platforms you're using, if that's what you're pulling anything from. You could be pulling something from books. Very different feeling. But I think this one is my favorite actually. And that is that it makes room for serendipity or serendipitous connections, <laughs> serendipity and connections. I think the term digital garden has really caught on culturally and people really love it because there's kind of a thing as you get older where you realize like there actually is no point to gardening. I mean, except for, you know, growing food, that's really awesome. But like if you're planting, if you just have a garden of flowers, other than creating a beautiful thing and then, but it is ephemeral, it then dies and then rebirths again. There's no like point to it, X, Y, Z. There's no like productive end necessarily necessarily to gardening in the in the traditional traditional sense of keeping a garden and that's something that is kind of 
beautiful about this process and the longer you're doing it the more in touch you are with your garden and the more you've built this relationship with it and hence you start to build connections and things start to kind of just serendipitously fall into your lap that you wouldn't have noticed before okay number four on this is that it really motivates me to take action. The most intimidating thing is the empty page for a lot of people but when you have so many connected ideas already you kind of already have a first draft in a sense. Number five which is nice is that it is fun and relaxing. What I'm talking about sounds like a lot of intellectual and like brain heft but it kind of becomes this thing that you're slowly doing passively all the time. In that way there's some days where I do feel like I'm really diving into the to the garden or you know I'm digging stuff up or whatever but a lot of days it's just saving a few things or okay so we will be talking about how to keep your digital garden there are basically endless ways to do this the purposes of this video I'm going to show you through the context of sublime how I save things how I contextualize them and how I draw connections the most intimidating thing can be how to start once you start you're gonna start identifying a better filtration system of what you want to add and what you don't want to add so you're not so overwhelmed what I would recommend is to start with your brain right now as it is in all its glory, to think to yourself, what are the current ideas, quotes, scenes from a movie, poems, paintings that I just kind of keep thinking about or coming back to? So within Sublime, for example, if you had just created an account, you can save all different types of things. So a link, an audio clip, a podcast clip, like it's just endless. And those are technically called cards. What you would start doing is just start creating some cards with things that you have top of mind. You can also search, so for example, I know that this is the quote that I found it here. It's already created, so I could save it. Or if I wanted to, you know, write down a different translation of it or something, I can write it here and then have author, so I give them credit. All different types of ways, upload, paste link, whatever you want to do on there. You can see here some things I've saved as cards. A big piece of advice is that you don't have to save everything. This goes back to what we were talking about earlier with like the gut instinct and for example don't let myself have TikTok on my phone. I only let myself go on it on desktop. I'll like videos that I think are funny but if I find something that really pushes me a little bit mentally I'll actually look back over that stuff. Out of 10 videos I probably will only save like one to my sublime library. It's all very simple but this is where it really starts to get fun. How you create connections overall is that you create collections. <laughs> So basically you have like your all cards. You can also view this in a full desktop. I'm technically viewing it in, um, you know, like mobile format because I'm just doing half page so you can see me while I talk. I have all kinds of collections and I usually, collections are how you are going to organize your cards and content. You can save multiple cards to multiple collections. They can overlap, they can interweave. That's really the beauty of this system. The way you end up organizing your your cards can be more literal or more abstract. I think, for example, I have one that's just film posters. And what I really like about this is I'm always on the lookout for posters that I love. This was for a short film I saw on Instagram. So that's a very literal collection. And then otherwise, I have a lot of times for like my video essays or for scripts I'm working on, they're way more abstract. I have one called overcoming cynicism, like a more positive outlook on life, possible piece about friendship. I've had two YouTube video essays I've done this year. One was about time and art making and how that balance is so tricky. Um, and that one was called Balance in Art. These are all the things that I referenced. I think I use most of them, but maybe not even all of them. And you can see this actually isn't that many references that I used. So this was only 10 things that are in this collection. And I made a long form 30 minute YouTube video about it. I don't know what these are going to become when I start them, but it can feel so tempting to make your collections or your organizing principles in whatever platform you're using, it can be really tempting to make them really literal. And while you don't need to make it hard on yourself, I would say that the way you organize your thoughts, the form is going to start to in influence the content and the content will influence the form and you kind of want that to be in a flow state hence you don't want to like push a label on something too early last section of this video will be why sublime is my personal platform of choice I guess I just find it really easy to save anything from anywhere let's say I'm on substack and this is my friend Chloe's substack and she posted this piece and I want to save it to sublime I'm gonna 
click the little button there and I'm going to add, I can decide which of my collections I wanna add it to. So let's add it to Digital Garden. I can add it to another collection and you can see it here. We can see it saved to these collections. I can also do this differently. I can do a quote. You can see that it automatically did that. I can also right click on anything, add to Sublime, makes it so easy. If you so choose, you can have it sync with your, here, wait, I'll come up for a second. Right here, you can see it's Kindle, Readwise, Bookmark, X Bookmarks, Instagram, and then Podcast Magic, which is created by Sublime and allows you to save clips from podcasts. So you can like sync all of those and then go back through your saves, make cards out of them, whatever you wanna do. And then the main function on here, related ideas. We can see I saved my friend's Substack post. I saved one thing, I get all of these other things. Even after reading this essay, I can read just off the top of my head that a lot of these are engaging with similar ideas and concepts that my friend Chloe was referencing in her Substack piece. This is so much more abstract and so much more just smart than a lot of other related idea types of things. You're also engaging on Sublime with a lot of things that have been saved by people who are similar deep thinkers to you. The stuff that you end up finding is kind of this like beautiful symbiotic relationship of when you save, like you receive more in a way. The next point of why Sublime would be the design. It's very clean. It's easy to digest everything at the same time. I don't feel like it's jumping out at me and trying to keep me on it forever so that I don't get anything done. One of the greatest like examples of this is on Sublime's homepage, they do staff picks. It's not an ever and end never ending scroll. Like the staff picks themselves are like specifically finite and there will be, you know, maybe one a day. And then like, if you haven't seen them in a week, you can go look and there's like seven new ones, but it's so limited. You really do let yourself comprehend the concepts that you're reading. I talked about this slightly earlier, but the search as well as the related ideas is really powerful. So you can be pretty abstract off the top of my head. Let's think of something random. Personal reflections on travel and privilege. It's understanding what I'm saying from a vibe basis. If I looked this up on Google, I would get some really weird stuff. The search is just so much more specific, especially if you're trying to find sources around abstract topics. The last point, you're really collecting to create something pretty quickly. And there's a lot of functions within Sublime that make this really easy. You can both use and not use them. If you're in a collection, you can click chat and it will automatically copy all of the collections metadata. And so then you could open up an LLM of your choice. And if you said, you know, can you give me five writing prompts for my sub stack on digital gardening? You don't know where to start. So it gives you, you know, five prompts, but it'll take all of the metadata from everything, give you very specific things. And I think everybody's LLM use is really different right now, but I think the people who do use it a lot speak a lot about how your references are what make the use great if you are going to use it. There's also insights right here. You can get like the gist, explain like I'm five, contrarian, take analogy. This Substack essay from my friend is about, she's kind of questioning why do I collect these rocks, but it's, it feels like this thing that's important to me. And the contrarian take is all just not fuel for living, clinging to rocks and memories can keep you stuck. So that's fun. And then additionally, what I'm using right now to even just talk about the, all this in is the canvas feature, which is basically like a big whiteboard. If I press create canvas, I'll say digital garden too. all the things I've saved within that collection and then has them all mapped out. So then I can start to go in here and I can be like, okay, I'm going to start with this quote. And then I really like this image. This image inspires me and I can really map it all out. I can draw connections. I can write stuff, notes, really anything. It's really such an open format and it's so flexible in so many ways. Okay, so I'm adding everything, continuing here. I think that's basically it for today. I have some quick final thoughts. I saved a lot of quotes about gardening, which I talked about slightly earlier and just kind of the process-oriented nature of it. But I liked this one a lot. Gardening is not outcome-oriented. A successful harvest is not the end of a gardener's existence, but only a phase of it. As any gardener knows, the vitality of a garden does not end with a harvest. It simply takes another form. Gardens do not die in the winter, but quietly prepare for another season. This is by James Carse. I thought this was really beautiful in terms of the ever-growing nature of your digital garden and just sticking in and enjoying it. And even if it feels dead, it's, it's not, <laughs> even if it's not alive yet. If you're interested in signing up for Sublime, you can use the link below and you can use code Mickey for 20% off premium. You can also try it for free if you wanna try it out first.
if you're feeling stuck, here are six things that you could start with. You can start with a question that intrigues you, a belief you have, a concept you want to learn more about, a list you want to curate, a feeling, and something you want to write about. There will be access to the Sublime Collection and then also all these notes that I took as well. I'll be below. I'm also going to save in the Sublime Collection um, some great other digital gardening videos. Sublime has some excellent workshops and then I also love um, Anna Howard's video. She's done a video for Sublime as well. She has some digital gardening videos and also like a system video. She's incredible. Go watch her stuff. Highly encourage you to try out Sublime or try out digital gardening in whatever format is available to you. And yeah, thank you for watching and sitting with me for a while. So thanks so much, guys. Bye-bye.